what do you as a fan want to see out of this game from the U S or, or even if it's not player related, it's Anthony Hudson, the interim manager. What do you want from him? It, it's a really weird time because whatever you're trying to implement as a coach doesn't necessarily mean that whoever takes over is going to try to implement the same types of things. Yeah, I think this is a hard one, right? And and we talked about this is it's a competitive match away from home and and there is a significance to it. So part 1, just like every national team game of significance, get the win, right? right. And that 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 tightens a little bit of the way in which you play. Yes, you're playing you're 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 the 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 uh huge favorite in this one. But it's about being like, you know, again, I go back. I, I know we people are probably annoyed of us saying this, but a lot of these games that you play away from home, a lot of it's about discipline, right? Doing the work, working together, being on the same page as your team on how we transition, how we defend in our blocks, where we, where we want to win the ball. Where are we finding these advantages that we think that we can capitalize on that will already give us that edge? That's part one. But then part two in possession, if they're going to sit back and bunker, how are we actually taking chances? When are we picking, choosing our moments to be creative and show a little bit of that flair that we've seen from this generation that I'm afraid we're going to lose if we make it too rigid of a system, right? Where you only overlap when there's these certain types of triggers, right? How do right. you actually create this right. combination play? Trust the first touch, trust the touch and the technique of the players around you, trust the flow of the game and play with an attractive style of play. But again, it's it's so hard. As I say that, I, I even start to tell myself like... Let's start with getting the win because that'll put us in a good spot. But sure. secondarily, um, you know, I want to see that we've got a really quality roster of players here. Um, let's see us take some chances. Let's see us actually. A lot of these players are playing in clubs where they're going to have to break down low blocks, right? At, at, from time to time. So I don't want it. I don't want a low block to be this extreme example of everybody bunkers against us. And it's so hard to break down because it is hard to break down. But you and I, Jimmy, used to spend hours every one day a week where you have to defend with five against seven or eight players, and you can make those seven or eight players suffer for a long period if you're organized, right? It is hard to break it down. But eventually, they find where those holes are, they find those gaps, and they start scoring goals on you in training. And so that's what I want to see is that sort of in-game management and thinking of uh, taking what the game gives you and being able to, to iterate on that as the game goes on, whether it's fatigue, whether it's openings, whether it's recognizing, oh, there might be something here and, and taking those risks. Okay, now they have another game against El Salvador in Orlando on Monday. We'll obviously be doing a preview for you guys and and a recap for you so make sure again you turn on your notifications no matter where you're picking up this podcast to make that happen and be a part of the festivities especially if you want to come live with us it's always fun when we're super mm -hmm. emotional though i don't think we're going to be too emotional in this one now i wonder in terms of balancing the squad unless taylor booth balls out then i'll be real emotional like i will joy, be emotional that'd be pretty know. exciting in terms of balancing the squad i mean you bringing in all these players most of them are flying great distances to be there. Do you roll out your quote unquote of these collection of players, your B squad against Granada and roll out your A squad against El Salvador? I wonder. We can get into that a little bit as we start to discuss this. I did want to go back though, because Tim Ream has also done an interview. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Whether it's been sanctioned or not is, is something completely different. And then we got to talk about uh, Fuller and Balogun as well, dropping out of the U21 mm -hmm. England mm -hmm. camp. But this is what Tim Ream said on Greg Berhalter. Yeah, I think for us players, I think bringing Berhalter back is a familiarity. It's the togetherness that he brought to the team after it was very much kind of sporadic and fractured. When he first came in, and I think Tim is referencing after we didn't qualify for 2018. When he first came in, it was a big transition with a lot of new guys coming into the program. I think he did a fantastic job in that aspect. And he laid very, very good foundations for the team. I'm not done. Tim mm -hmm. Ream continues. Whether he comes back or not is for us as players, is not for us as players. I've said this previously. It's not something we really worry about or concerned about because it's not our job to hire for that position. I wonder if he knows that we also don't have people in position <laughs> to hire. <laughs> others. But if they bring him back, obviously we'll continue to work under him. If they don't, we'll continue to work under somebody else. And that's just yeah. the nature of what we do as players. That's the nature of the sport. Sometimes there's continuity. Sometimes there's change. And we'll roll with whatever happens. And Tim Ream should run for goddamn office. That's a very diplomatic yeah, answer. It is. So, so any any thoughts on this and Tim Ream on Greg Berhalter? I, I think that this is a, a good, mature response to this question, ultimately. Yeah. Like, what is, 
like, what do you want from Tim? He was left out of the cycle all that time and then went to a World Cup. So on one hand, you go, oh, yeah, Greg overlooked him all this time. And then on the other hand, you're like, you went to a World Cup, man. Like, and you played well. And you're probably one of our, when I was thinking about who do you put on the, in our lineup first in these upcoming games, Tim Ream. Like, he's got the maturity. He's got the experience. He's got that uh, overcoming of adversity. But when I think about those quotes, it's a good diplomatic answer because, but it's also the truth. He didn't beat around the bush of, of, of the answer. The reality is, is it's not his job to decide. When Tim Ream got called in leading up to the World Cup, did he maybe have conversations with Greg that were tense or did he maybe refuse to go? Or I don't, I have no idea. But he got called in. He performed well. He did really well. And now he is, again, our, at least for me, one of our first that I put into the lineup, regardless of his, his age, because we need that experience on the field. So when I think about that answer, it's true. You call either, either, either he continues or he doesn't. And we're going to keep getting on with the work. I don't think you're going to see like a team protest. Uh, if, if Greg Berhalter were to get the job again. And I also don't think you would see the team protest if a new coach gets the job. You get on with it. It's a national team. It's not a club team. It's very, right, right, very right. different. Um, so I think it's a, it's, a, it's a good answer. Okay, and, and I appreciate you Until saying that. Until that new coach doesn't bring him into the, to the, to the first <laughs> camp and says, hey, man, we're moving past you. Yeah, yeah, you're 35, bro. It's time to move on. But I would say that I like that point of you saying that this is the national team and not a club team because I think I'm going to use that as it pertains to building my lineup, which we'll get into in a little bit. Don't worry. I do want to talk about Fuller and Balogun, though, because he just dropped out of the U21 England squad. And I know that he put a cryptic message on social media about going where he's appreciated and so on and so forth. I think what's interesting is that England didn't call him in. Gareth Southgate, the manager, didn't call him in. And he was upset about that. That's when that post Oh, you came. thought that you thought that was about the national I thought he maybe had a breakup with a girl or something. Well, like that, that could like be possible. Like, that could just, be that, well, it know, feels like a breakup. Yeah, yeah. But, Jimmy, but, 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 you can't just connect that to a non call I can and I will. I can and I will. Okay. I've been misreading his messages for months now. I gotta go back and <laughs> <laughs> so 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 Marcus Rashford and Mason Mount drop out of the England squad, both attacking players. Rashford probably more like for like obviously with with Balogun mm -hmm. than Mount, but still two attacking players. And Gareth Southgate elects not to call in anybody, which makes that makes me seem like Gareth Southgate's actually trying to do us a goddamn favor by giving us Fuller and Balogun. And then, and then after that doesn't get called in, he then drops out of the England 21 U21 squad, even though his club in France, Rons, says that he's was injury free. So you wonder what's happening there. Now he's got 17 goals to his name in Liga and 28 matches so far this season. He was born in New York. Fuller and Balogun to Nigerian parents, but he grew up in England. So he could play for Nigeria. There's still like this outside shot that the Super Eagles could come in and swoop for, for Fuller and Balogun, which would be so heartbreaking for us here because we feel like there's a nice position ready for him to go that nobody's really put their stamp on and owned, even though we have guys tap dancing around it. Maybe Daryl DK mm -hmm. will be that guy over these two games to really start to own it. But uh, any thoughts on Fuller and Balogun? And you think he's inching any closer to the U.S.? Got to be. He's, he's got to be. I mean, he's 21 years old. He's in the form of his life, Jimmy, as your T-shirt says. But but, but he, <laughs> he can, can dribble, he can dribble. And he can score. Uh, and so it's a tough situation because <laughs> he's probably going through it. In his mind, he was probably thinking, I'm going to play for England. And I'm going to go prove by going on on loan out of uh, away from Arsenal that I can prove it. Arsenal hasn't shown any reason to bring him back in or any sort of willingness. Like He's probably going through all that saying, guys, what else do I have to do? to prove that I can play at Arsenal and to prove that I can play for the England national team. Now we know England's got a deep, deep uh, roster and always will of, of strikers. So it's going to be a tough go no matter where he goes, if he went that route. But I think it's certainly uh, illuminating uh, his potential decision to come play for the U S and I do think this is a case of holding out because he wants to play for England. England is a much bigger national team than the U S a much more historic national team than the U S. So if I was in that situation and it was like for like, and I grew up in this, and my my heroes played for England, whatever. Yeah. That's what yeah. I would want to do. Now, if that door closes or doesn't seem like there's a pathway there, then you play for the U.S. It doesn't make you less uh, American or anything like that. But I think that's probably becoming more and more um, um, like an option clear yeah, to, yeah. Uh, of him. But it, it, I, I also think that it, it's going to be an amazing option for him if he decides to go that route. If you look at our our crop of players all around the same age as him, uh, plus minus a couple of years, and and having the next few years to be. Uh, potentially our number one uh, up top is is incredible. Makes me wonder though, are we going to play with one up top? If we if we end up developing know. all these strikers, are we going to play Woo! with two up top? What are we going to do? It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. I'm excited about the future.